I searched on YouTube. I wanted to see reasons why for FH5 is good. And all I found was a video stated why FH5 feels boring, why everyone is quitting FH5. FH5 is not a 10 out of 10. Is FH5 worse than FH4? And I watched the one which says why FH5 feels boring. The first complaint was about the progression at the start of the game because the start of the game you are given supercars namely the c8 corvette mark 5 supra and a ford bronco so but the bronco is not a supercar see from the moment you complete the starter race that introduces you into mexico you're given the option to pick a car from three choices and like usual nothing is wrong with that every horizon game has done this but what I want you to focus on are the specific cars that are being offered. These cars consist of the Corvette Stingray, Ford Bronco, and Toyota Supra. Now, there's a trait they all share in common. You probably already see it, but they are all brand new cars, with models only reaching back to 2020. For comparison, look at Forza Horizon 1's starter car, or Forza Horizon 2's. Hell, even Forza Horizon 3's was a fairly common selection you would see day to day in the world. I think you realize there's a pretty big issue sprouting from this because in Forza Horizon 5, you are starting with cars that are exotic, prestigious, and rare. Am I the only one who doesn't have a problem with starter, the starter cars? Because the low-end cars, I get, I get tired of them very quickly. Anyways, some say if you are given a supercar at the start of the game then there is no use for the low-end cars which sounds like a you problem because if you wanted to use the low-end cars so bad why don't you go and use them because you can still use them no one is stopping you plus they are cheap at the auto show and there are some events on the festival playlist which force you to drive those low-end cars problem solved and then he complained that the game gives you content which could have taken you hours to unlock it's easy to get the cars the high-end cars like maybe the hyper cars the whole progression right from the start as soon as you get opened up to the expanse world and do a few races the game throws high-end content that should be hours into the game right at your face so much that it actually overwhelms you in my first two hours, I had a million dollar house, a Lamborghini Huracan, a McLaren P1, and also, can't forget, the 2021 Corvette Stingray that I got as my first car. It doesn't only break the progression, but also break- And again, I searched why Need for Speed Unbound is so good. And I found this video, and guess what he said? Game. Every aspect of the game at launch was designed to create a longer experience. The campaign forced you to progress through the day and night cycles, which took way too long, and it was very repetitive. They split the solo experience from the multiplayer and forced you to unlock and buy all of the cars separately for each. Again, that took forever. Money was hard to come by and upgrades were expensive in both multiplayer and solo experiences. And finally, the challenges to unlock cars in multiplayer specifically take an insane amount of time. To unlock one car, some of the challenges were to complete 30... He said the game at launch was designed to create a longer experience. The campaign forced you to progress through the day and night cycles, which took a way too long. It was very and, and it was very repetitive. And then he said, and a playlist is three races. That's 90 races to unlock one car. Anyways, the point is, this type of grind made players quit very early and in the PC world turned to cheating the system and adding money to their accounts using mods and hacks. So of the 25% player base the game launched with, more than half of those players quit the game in the first couple of weeks. Mistake the game made players to quit very early and PC players turned to cheating the system and adding money to their accounts using mods maybe maybe that's one of the things 
Forza is trying to get rid of. People just people are just lazy because even now the developers when the developers add cars on, on the game through the festival playlist, which is not that hard to complete, some people still use mods to get the cars, but it's only few people that I see on YouTube. It's not all the people that some use mods, but if you are playing it on console, then can't use mods. So it goes to show that people will complain no matter what they are complaining that forza gives you content easily at the start of the game and then need for speed here comes need for speed unbound they give you that progression which you want and people still complain and that's why i'll never complain about the progression in horizon 5 because if they make it hard people will still complain that's what people do and yes i get why people want a good storyline for the horizon 1 that was a good story i get why people are missing that and some players always complain about recycled content like when they take cars from fh4 to fh5 burning them as new content well that is understandable mostly if you play fh4 but i've seen youtubers like black panther complain about about it and recently need for speed unbound added up the porsche 959 police car mind you it was in need for speed hot pursuit and in need for speed unbound you have to pay for the car in order to get it and he called it a special car and didn't complain because it's need for speed Front. Now I'm not normally a, a, an old classic -y Porsche in terms of you know the special ones, but this this is a special Porsche. This one was actually available in the Speed Hot Pursuit, and so it's here for the Hot Pursuit update. This is actually the paid car that's now fully unlocked before the free car has fully had everything unlocked. I get why he doesn't complain because he likes Need for Speed more. He even got the ghost logo tattoo on his wrist on his head. So I I I, I see he's always hyping up need for speed but always patches for the that's what i've seen while watching his videos like at least forza horizon 5 added content from the last game and gave it to us for free most of the cars many of the cars and then when need for speed adds a car from need for speed hot pursuit and then you have to pay it and then they take it like that no complaints and another game that gets compared to forza horizon 5 is the crew motor fest because it's also a festival game and for some reason they say it's better than fh5 the first reason is because they give you low-end cars at the start of the game but 90 percent of the time you're gonna use a loaned car for the events in the playlist and after you completed the playlist you win a supercar and then don't get to use your low-end cars because you want a porsche after completing the porsche playlist because it is available at the start of the game and they also complain about the progression being too long to unlock things but complain when it's easy in fh5 players don't know what they want for for another example they didn't like that there was no for a whole season in fh4 but when it was removed in fh5 now they miss it and i bet the developers were boiling when they heard the players complaining that they missed the snow but at fh4 they were complaining that they don't like the snow okay here are the things i like about fh5 which makes me love it more than other games like need for speed unbound the crew motor first the first thing is the graphic of the game look good like i don't see any other game okay maybe unbound has good graphic but the second thing the game game lets you upgrade like the upgrades are more realistic not really really realistic like for example the game lets you let upgrade change the car audio things like the air filter and the exhaust upgraded can make changes to how the car sounds the third thing is the event lab which is one of the best features to be added on any racing game because you can create anything out of your imagination like recreating a race secret from real life and other mini games like changing the gravity in an event and creating your own city in the game and you can play car football in the event lab like you can do many many things things if you are bored with the progression you can still go to the event lab and do many 
endless event lab races like mm. the things i've saw there Ooh. the fourth thing is the realistic tuning or which is close to realism but still fun like for example when you want to reach a top speed in a car removing the rear wing can help you with the top speed and reduce drag need for speed unbound hmm it's another issue I recently saw a video of Black Panther getting top speed of 245 miles per hour in a Koenigsegg Regera with a big rear wing and also and also changing the tire pressure can affect your speed same as gear tuning and there's more. The biggest which I love is the drifting in this game. It is the best out of the whole games i've mentioned in this video like putting the drift suspension can help with oversteering when drifting your camber affects how you drift you need negative camber to drift more properly you even need drift tires the physics of drifting is the best out of the games I've, I've mentioned in this video. Like, have you seen Need for Speed Unbound Drifting before they added the drift update? But yeah, still not. Even the drift update still doesn't reach the level of Forza's drifting. Motor Fast at the other hand. Okay, Motor Fast is better than Need for Speed. But I wouldn't say it's better than, than FH5. Even FH4 was the best. Like, okay, I've seen other videos of the old horizon games they are drifting are still better than current need for speed games and motor first or the crew still better than all of those games the second biggest is building more track focused cars that have more grip around the corners putting on a rear wing gives you more grip and front splitters basically putting more arrow basically putting more arrow on your car it will be better around the corners and there are some cars that come stock with aero like the aston martin valkyrie amr pro and the porsche gt2 rs those cars are insane around the corners because they have more aero and leg and they lag when you are doing top speed runs because of the aero they have they, they have more downforce and then the wings produce more drag in conclusion to me i think every game has its unique feel and we should embrace all them and we should we should embrace all of them in instead of comparing and choose which one will be your main focus imagine if all the games didn't have unique experiences they would be like modern electric cars they would feel soulless i chose to play forza because it's because of its physics and graphics and the other things i've mentioned the game has managed to combine realism with fun let me know in the comments what makes you love the racing game you are currently playing